What the heck does cannibalism and corn have in common? Stay tuned. All right, so here we are at a corn plant. And you can see some of the silk has is starting to change color, and I'm going to talk briefly about that. I'm not going to get too much into the reproductive uh, phase of corn, but I will tell you briefly. That is the male. Okay, that's the tassel. Generally speaking, when the corn tassels out, it is done growing in height. This comes out first. This is the male. This is where the pollen comes from. Every one of those seeds contains pollen. Now, the silk is the female portion of the corn, or I should say the, the cob itself, but this is the, the transfer agent. Okay, the pollen gets on here. Each one of these, let's call these hairs, each one of these is attached to a corn kernel. And once the pollen hits these, it's kind of like a tube. It goes down in. It takes about 24 hours once the pollen hits this. Once this starts to change color, it has been pollinated. It's done. Like I said, it takes about 24 hours. goes down. Now, you peel back the husk, and you see that there are kernels missing on a cob. That means that one of these, I guess, hairs did not get fertilized by the pollen. Generally speaking, that happens... Uh, when corn is planted sparsely, like in sweet corn and whatnot. Now I will also tell you from my experience, the top cob is generally your dominant one. And then it goes down from there. Cannibalism in corn. Once you plant corn, it spends all its time growing a root system, a stalk, leaves, and then it tassels, and then this pollinates, and everything starts to shrink. All the energy that it had spent putting into roots, the stalk, the leaves, all now goes into production of this ear. And that is basically for species, basically guarantees that the species will survive. So that is self-cannibalism. You could say in a way that corn cannibalizes itself. Um, let me see if I can find... Now this is deer damage here. Uh, unfortunately, it is sweet to deer. They love silk. Um, so if you can find a way to keep deer off your silk before it's pollinated, um, you'll do a lot better. I mean, a lot of these have been bitten. Actually, I'm trying to... Here's another one that looks pollinated. See how it's turning colors? And it'll die. There's also something called a shake test. Now, I could cut this off of here and split it down the middle with a knife and gently peel that back so that I'm not pulling off the silk myself and then shake it, and most of it should be uh, falling off the kernel once it is fertilized. Um, if you want me to do a shake test in a different video, comment down below and I'll think about it. Let's see here. So we got deer damage here, deer damage here. And this is a food plot, by the way, that I'd planted. So it's sparsely planted. I just threw extra seed in here. You have one that's, okay, here's one that's not pollinated. Okay. So you got, no, I don't know. That's probably six and a half seven foot tall anyways and then this this has not been pollinated now if i cut these off if i cut this off here and i did the shake test split it right down the middle with a knife gently pull that back all of these would be attached now obviously the base starts here so your silk's going to be the longest from down to here up but it should all be attached and hang just like a wig off that thing but if I come over here, where am I? And did the shake test and cut down the middle. Most of these 
and, and certainly by a d another day or so, should hang off and not be attached to the, the kernels. So that's today's lesson in corn. There are a lot of people out there that don't understand that meat is not made in a grocery store. And I'm pretty sure those same people don't understand where corn comes from either. So you have a great day. Comment below. Subscribe if you're not. I'll catch you at the next video.